Hey everyone, I'm here to talk to you today about a kind of like a tool that I made because I found myself doing the same thing over and over in many different projects. And when you are coding, if you're doing the same thing over and over, it's probably a good idea to figure out if you can do that same thing in less lines. It makes it a little bit easier to read and then in the long run it might actually save you some time. So here we go. Uh, what I've created is this class over here and um, it's going to be pretty handy because what it allows us to do is it lets us increase the size of any array no matter what the type is by one and insert a value into that array. So this is pretty cool because I found myself in many different projects doing the following. I would have these arrays and I'd want to change the size of these arrays and it takes about like four or five lines to do that. That's not too big of a deal but when you're doing this with different types you can't even copy and paste because you have to do extra little changes um, and yes I, I guess that's not too big of a deal but it is a hassle and it does take up a little bit of extra time and it makes it a little bit harder to read because those four or five lines that you actually have to use they're not that readable so here's what I did I said I have this character array and this int array and I want to add something into each array and I want to do it the same way both times. So I'm going to need a more um, lower level class, something a little bit more general that I can modify instead and apply the code to that and somehow figure out what type of array I'm supposed to return. So I'm using the system array type. So you will have to add this line here up at the top if you don't already have it. Um, we are using Unity by the way and the system array type um, it's it's very general in terms of like what you can use it for so this you can make this a string array an int array a vector 3 array any kind of custom class array so I'm going to prove that to you in a moment and instead of going through and typing everything um, I'm just going to leave the code up here and let you guys take a look at that so feel free to pause the screen if you need to um, I'll talk through it briefly just to go over my thought process when I was creating this. Um, I did make two functions, add to array and add to array at index. And they basically do the same thing, except as you can tell, uh, the second function will allow you to pass in an index and that will let you uh, decide where you want to insert an element into this array. This is all based off of the principle that arrays are not um, inherently resizable. And so, you have to create a new array and replace the old array when you do this. So let's go through the basics. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new array of the system array type and I'll use create instance. Now I need to define what kind of array this is going to be. So I want to choose my passed in array, my initial array A. I'm going to get the type. Now if you use get type this actually gets a type of array um, and you don't want the type of array, you want the elements within the array, you want their type. So then we also have to use get element type. And then um, we have to, of course, increase the length by one so that we can insert object O. This is kind of like, these might be new words or words that you don't really use when you're coding for Unity. Um, but basically an object could be anything. It could be a string, an int, a float, uh, any kind of data type here and then your array is going to be the initial array that you're now expanding. So next line we're just going to copy our initial array to array B starting at location 1 so this will be index 1 and lastly we have to set the value of of course index 0 with our new object. Um, I chose index 0 so that index 0 would always be the newest but you could even just choose index uh, a dot length and that would be the last object and then you would change that to zero if you wanted. Um, this line is really not necessary because we're returning a value. You could just return b but I'm gonna say a equals b and return a just because I was doing some copying and pasting before. For the second function it's basically the exact same thing except instead of using copy to which copies the entire array a we're gonna loop through and set the values manually except for of course the index that you've selected and then we're going to set the index to the object value. So to kind of show you how this works I've created a separate script which basically doesn't do very much except um, it's going to create 
an int array of numbers. I'll give that a, a length of two. And then it's gonna create a, I created this custom class here because I wanted to show you that it's not just for those default classes. You can use this for pretty much any kind of class you want. Um, so this custom class is a character and this character will have an HP and a name. So I'm gonna use input get key down key code space so that whenever I press space, the following two things will happen. I'm going to add to array a character type variable, my man, into the array, my people. I'm going to add to the array the next number, an integer type, into the integer array numbers. You'll notice I've referenced AE here. AE is that array expansion class that we created over here. And to show you kind of how I set that up, oh, by the way, this part is important. You do need to cast the type of array uh, when you use this function because the array class, the system array class, it does not know its type. So you do have to tell it which type it is. So I go into Unity. I create an empty game object. I'm gonna call it holder of arrays. And I've attached both scripts. You only need to attach the array expansion script one time so that you can get the reference and then you can use it as many times as you want throughout the scene. Uh, in fact, you might not even need to do that, but um, I was just trying to keep this as easy to do as possible. So the character data script, I'm going to go ahead and fill in a couple of values. I gave uh, my man some HP and I gave him a name, call him Carl. And for the next number, I gave that one a value. I'm just gonna type in the number five. And I did have to drag and drop the array expansion script into this box over here. Now, when the script starts up, numbers is gonna get a size of two and my people will stay at size of zero. It's important that I do it this way so that I can show you this function will work whether or not the array has a size. So right now, even with a size of zero, um, we're still gonna be able to add something. So I'll just click on the scene and press space. And as you can see, Carl has been added to my people and the number five has been added to the numbers array. They both increased by size, they both increased in size by one and they've gotten the, um, the values that I wanted to add into them. So I've changed next number and I'll go ahead and press space again. And as you can see, Carl has been added one more time and I've added element eight again one more time. You can do the same thing with add to array at index. The only difference would be if you do add to array at index, you have to add a third parameter to pass in. So you could pass in, let's say parameter three right here. So that'll be index three. You just have to be careful that you don't accidentally um, pass in a value that's beyond the limits of the array. Otherwise, you're going to get an out-of-bounds exception. So that's it for my video. Um, some things you could do in the future. I might do this also in the future. Um, instead of just doing an add to array function, I might also do a remove from array function and a remove from array at index because it might be useful to have uh, both of these or both functions available. And um, that's about it. If you guys would like to see more of these videos that are uh, a little bit less common, um, they're kind of like programming hacks, let me know and I'll continue to make those. Otherwise, I do have a subscribe button up there, so make sure you get a chance to click it and uh, like the video if it helped you out. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.